Hello bookish friends, welcome to uh, April wrap up uh, part one. Uh, in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the 12 works uh, that I finished and one book that I DNF'd uh, in the month of April. So far, uh, I have done uh, mid-month wrap-ups uh, almost every time. Uh, but uh, since I was in the disaster area uh, in that time period, uh, this wrap-up will be much longer. Uh, but uh, like the previous wrap-ups, uh, it will consist of uh, clips uh, that I recorded after I finished the works. Today is the 2nd of April and I finished uh, the book that I had chosen uh, from my physical uh, TBR glass, which was called uh, Kambur by Esra Kahya. Uh, this book uh, was a gift uh, from my best friend and she said uh, that uh, she really liked uh, the uh, writing style of the uh, book and I was really eager to try it but I couldn't read it because of the business uh, caused by the earthquake. In this book we follow the events uh, taking place after the suicide of a uh, young woman who had a hunchback. We follow the events that takes place in the past as well as the present time. Uh, from the point of view of uh, three different women the hunchback who committed suicide uh, her older sister and her mother who have lived a very different lives of uh, this uh, suicide event revealed uh, many secrets buried in the family first of all uh, i definitely agree with uh, my friend uh, this book had a very uh, beautiful uh, writing style and uh, I really uh, did uh, find uh, the events very, very interesting. Uh, and uh, this book uh, won the uh, best uh, novel prize uh, in, in memory of one of the most famous uh, novelists uh, in the Turkish literature, Ahmet Hamdi Tanpınar. When I read the book, uh, I thought that she really deserved uh, that prize. I found her uh, characterizations uh, very, very strong especially the conflicts uh, that uh, the three uh, main characters each had. So in summary, I thought it was a very decent book and I gave Kambur by Esra Kahya an 8 out of 10. Today is the 3rd of April and I finished the audiobook that I was listening. Uh, and uh, this was a carryover uh, from middle grade March. I listened to the next book in Paddington Bear series, which was Paddington at Large. In this book, uh, consisting of uh, short anecdotes, we still uh, follow the uh, very uh, funny and uh, enjoyable adventures of Paddington. Uh, for example, in one story, Paddington enters a uh, quiz show in television, uh, and uh, in, in another one, he becomes a part of a theater company. And of course, very funny and hilarious things uh, do follow. Uh, are uh, very well intended but uh, very uh, accident prone there like the other books uh, in the series it was a great joy to listen uh, to the uh, audiobook uh, which was narrated by Lou Benewell uh, although I still think Stephen Fry did a better job he is also a very good uh, narrator and considering he played Henry Brown uh, in the uh, movies uh, it's also very uh, sweet uh, that uh, he narrates this book. Some of the adventures were very very funny like the uh, one he entered uh, in the uh, quiz show uh, whereas uh, some were mediocre. Uh, so uh, in summary I gave uh, Paddington at Large by Michael Bond a 7 out of 10 and uh, I am very glad I also progressed in my uh, yearly challenge which is series about series. It is still the 3rd of April and uh, I DNF'd uh, the book that I uh, requested uh, from the book Sirens, uh, which was called Harara Voices and Beyond by Andrew Chatara. I originally uh, wanted to read this book uh, because of the uh, reading challenge uh, that I'm doing, uh, which is uh, to read uh, as much uh, from around the world as possible. This book was set in Zimbabwe. However, uh, when I uh, started reading the book, uh, I felt really uh, disinterested in the plot. I have mentioned uh, many times uh, that I do not like uh, books featuring 
drug uh, use, uh, drug trafficking, or drug barons. And uh, this book had all of these elements, as well as sexual assault uh, to women. And in this uh, disaster uh, region, uh, which I am currently uh, employed in, I thought uh, it was too much for me to read. Uh, and uh, I need more engaging and more uplifting uh, books than this one. So I decided to DNF Harara Voices and Beyond uh, by Andrew Chatora. Today is the uh, 8th of April and uh, I finished Excellent Woman by Barbara Tim. Uh, I read this book uh, for uh, Kate House, uh, Kindred Spirits Book Club. Barbara Tim was an author that I wanted to read uh, for a very long time. In this book, Mildred, uh, who's a vicar's daughter, an unmarried woman, closely associated with the vicarage uh, and uh, the society regarding vicarage, one day meets her next door neighbors, a married couple, uh, who has uh, very different lives as uh, she spends more and more time with them. She questions her life and uh, also the, the concept of excellent women who are very efficient and uh, helpful uh, to others without being selfish at all. I liked uh, some parts of the uh, book very, very much, especially the writing style. It was uh, very clear and uh, also easy to follow. The questioning of societal norms uh, were uh, done excellently uh, and uh, I really liked the concept of excellent woman. Although I'm not a, a part of uh, any uh, religious or any kind of uh, society, uh, I can understand uh, the uh, concept of uh, being uh, single uh, for a long time and uh, also uh, trying to be selfless and uh, how that sometimes makes us feel being uh, taken the advantage of. I really could not feel any uh, connection uh, towards uh, the character because of a low, low self-esteem of Mildred. Uh, I also found the plot very, very slow, which made it sometimes very hard to get uh, engaged in the story. Additionally, uh, when I read the, some of the reviews, it was said that uh, this book was uh, one of the uh, funniest works of Barbara Pym and uh, I failed to see any humor <laughs> in the book. So that's why I gave uh, Excellent Woman by Barbara Pym a 6 out of 10. Today is the 12th of April and uh, yesterday evening I finished uh, the book uh, that I was listening uh, for uh, People April uh, event, which was called uh, Babamun Babulu by Orhan Pamuk. Uh, this uh, book uh, was uh, translated uh, to English as uh, My Father's Suitcase. This non-fiction book uh, consisted of uh, four speeches by Orhan Pamuk uh, in which he received uh, international awards. Uh, the speech uh, that uh, the book was titled, which is of course my father's uh, suitcase, uh, was given after he received uh, the Nobel Prize for Literature. Uh, in these speeches, uh, Pamuk uh, talks about what it means to become a writer, how being grown in uh, Turkey, which is uh, affected by both uh, Western and Eastern values, and how the contradiction of these values uh, do affect uh, his writing style as well as his political views. In addition to those, in the Nobel Prize uh, speech, uh, he talks about how uh, his uh, father affected uh, his writing and his values and his uh, thoughts in general. Uh, that uh, speech uh, was the speech that I liked the best. The others were also good, uh, but uh, they were uh, sort of similar and they were more political uh, than uh, the first one. And I have to admit Orhan Pamuk, uh, who narrated his own book, uh, was a very bad uh, narrator and uh, if my Turkish subscribers are listening uh, I would uh, advise them uh, to not to listen to the audiobook. So in summary I gave uh, Babamun Babulu My Father's Suitcase by Orhan Pamuk on 7 out of 10 and uh, I will make a dedicated Turkish shop video about uh, this book uh, at the end of the month. Today is the 19th of April and uh, yesterday evening I finished the first book uh, in the 
uh, Remnants Trilogy, uh, which was called uh, The Keening by Margaret Pinard. As I mentioned many times, uh, Margaret Pinard uh, is a uh, friend uh, that I met uh, through Booktube, uh, and uh, I really wanted to read her uh, books. Made a uh, read along of the trilogy. Maybe I missed uh, because I was in the disaster area. Nobody uh, wanted to join uh, the read along. But if you have read the first book uh, and uh, want to join uh, in the uh, second and the third book, uh, I would be very happy to read this trilogy with you. Anyway, uh, in this uh, first book, uh, we follow the uh, McLean family who lives in uh, Scotland and they earn uh, their uh, living uh, by uh, burning kelp, which is a tradition uh, that was very popular uh, in the beginning of the uh, 19th century in Scotland. The family consists of uh, a mother, her three children uh, from her first marriage, and a stepfather uh, and a, a little child. In the first chapters of the book, uh, the family receives news uh, that they would have to leave their land uh, because uh, the landlord uh, makes a deal with the uh, newly uh, founded uh, British uh, state uh, in Scotland and they would have to uh, go somewhere else uh, to earn a living. Uh, Gillian, the stepfather, and Neil, uh, the oldest uh, son, goes uh, to Glasgow to find out if they would be able to find a new job to earn a living uh, for their family. And the family's uh, struggle to survive and to live in a better condition continues all throughout the book. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the clip, I was very curious about how uh, Margaret would write. And I loved her writing style. Uh, first of all, I fully uh, pictured myself uh, in the uh, in the conditions uh, that uh, the family lived in and uh, the family uh, went uh, to lots of different places uh, throughout, all throughout the book and uh, I felt like I was uh, traveling with them, uh, feeling the surroundings and uh, suffering and uh, being happy with them because of the surroundings. And of course, uh, the reason that I felt happy uh, and uh, suffered with them was that with the section of two small children, I fully connected with every single personality uh, described in the book. Uh, the very delicate uh, connection between uh, a very loving stepfather uh, and uh, their uh, very respectful uh, children uh, was described uh, very, very beautifully. And the matriarch and uh, the eldest daughter uh, were very strong women so so that made it very easy for me to like them immensely what made the book so special for me was the strong bond uh, between all of the family members how uh, they uh, went uh, through all of the difficulties uh, completely uh, as a whole family uh, because i value my family the most uh, i loved uh, that aspect of the book Overall, it was a very uh, emotional and fulfilling uh, reading experience for me and uh, I gave uh, The Keening by Margaret Pinard a 9 out of 10. Today is the 22nd of April and I finished uh, two works yesterday. Uh, the first work uh, that I finished uh, was a short story that I was bud reading with Alice at uh, Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Uh, we both read uh, a classic together, which was The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde. In this short story, an American family uh, buys a, a haunted house, even though the owner of the house warns them uh, that they will regret buying this house. The uh, father of the family says that he does not believe in ghosts. And a couple of days later, uh, some weird things uh, start to happen. Uh, in the uh, house, uh, which indicates uh, that the rumors were true. But the family chose to ignore uh, this ghost and uh, the ghost thinks that it is very, very rude that they do such a thing. Uh, I think I'm becoming a fangirl of Oscar Wilde's writing uh, because uh, I just loved the writing uh, and the width of the uh, story uh, all throughout the book. I also really liked uh, the a uh, slow, uh, slow passage of uh, the story being hilarious to uh, quite, uh, quite philosophical and somewhat theological. I think he was an expert in creating all of the moods with his writing. I also loved uh, the uh, criticism uh, of Wilde 
uh, to both uh, English and uh, American societies and uh, their uh, very weird uh, contradictions done in a very witty way as well as a very clever way. Uh, in summary, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, this short story. I gave uh, The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde an 8 out of 10. Second uh, book that I finished uh, was a uh, essay collection that I read for People April, uh, Ödünç Yaşamlar by Ali Poyrazoğlu. Uh, I initially thought that uh, this book uh, would be sort of like a memoir of a quite famous uh, theater actor who is known for his dark wit. I have to say maybe because of this expectation, I was a bit uh, disappointed by this book. So I gave it a 6 out of 10, which is sort of like an average rating for me. I thought some of his ideas were too generic and I have to say too pessimistic and whiny for my taste. And maybe because I read it almost 25 years after it was written, some of the passages felt outdated. But my favorite sections were about the time uh, that he, he starred in a Broadway production uh, as a theater artist. Uh, I thought that if this book uh, was a memoir like I initially expected it to be, I think I would have liked it uh, very very much. I gave uh, Odunç Yaşamlar by Ali Poyrazoğlu a 6 out of 10. Today is the 23rd of uh, April and I finished uh, one book yesterday evening and uh, one book this morning. Uh, the book that I finished uh, yesterday uh, was called uh, Dağın Öteki Yüzü by uh, Erandis Atasu. This Turkish book was uh, translated uh, to English as uh, The Other Side of the Mountain, uh, the exact translation of the Turkish title. In this historical fiction book, uh, we follow uh, the life of uh, a uh, family uh, through the 20th century from the points of view of uh, different uh, members uh, of the family. Uh, our main uh, character is uh, Vijdan, the oldest uh, daughter of an immigrant family who came to uh, the Ottoman Empire from the Balkans and then became a very uh, heavy supporter of the Kemalist movement which founded the modern Turkish Republic. We also uh, follow the viewpoints of her brothers, uh, her husband, as well as uh, sometimes her mothers. And there is an overall uh, narrator uh, of this uh, family saga who is unnamed and, but known to be the daughter of Vijnan and the granddaughter of the family. And from the introduction part and the essays uh, contained uh, within the book, uh, we know that uh, this book has very strong autobiographical elements uh, regarding uh, the author's uh, family uh, as well as the author herself. Uh, first of all, I was uh, very, very surprised by how much I was invested in the book, uh, considering the, uh, the storytelling method uh, is not something that I prefer in books. Although the points of view were very, very clear uh, who was talking, uh, the stories are told uh, in a stream of conscience way and not following any kind of chronological order of the events. Because uh, I was very much invested in the story and uh, really uh, found myself identifying with uh, many of the characters uh, with some members of my own family. It was really hard for me not to be invested in the story. And uh, I also really uh, liked, uh, although the author uh, had a, a clear reference of uh, which idealism uh, she preferred, she also described uh, the thoughts of the members of the family who fell away uh, from the Kemalist movement, very, very ob objectively, in my opinion, of course. So in summary, I gave the uh, Noteki Yüzü by Erandis Atasu an 8 out of 10. I'm thinking of uh, doing uh, a Turkish shelf video of this book. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this book uh, is a, a great uh, book uh, for my international friends uh, if they want to know uh, the uh, positives and uh, negatives of the Kemalist movement uh, which founded uh, the uh, Turkish Republic uh, exactly 100 years ago. The second book uh, that I finished uh, was a very short novel belonging to a cozy mystery series uh, by Mary Higgins Clark. 
uh, this book was the book that I chose uh, from my uh, physical books class TBR uh, for the month of April. In this uh, book, which is a special uh, story for the Christmas time, uh, there are two mysteries. Uh, one is uh, what happened uh, to a, a little girl uh, who was left uh, in the uh, church in which our main characters uh, do attempt exactly seven years ago. The other one uh, was to uncover uh, the truth behind uh, the two existing wills of a lady uh, which seems to have been uh, signed exactly uh, two days apart from each other. Our main characters, uh, Avira and Willy, an elderly couple who became lottery winners uh, in the previous books, uh, tried to uncover these mysteries uh, existing in this uh, very short novel. So this was a, such a charming book and I have to admit this was what I needed uh, after some really good quality but a bit pessimistic books that I've read very very recently. I really like the light tone of uh, this mystery series and after reading them about uh, two pages uh, I fell in love uh, with the characters of the book. Although the mysteries uh, were a bit uh, sappy uh, for my taste, uh, I thought it was uh, because of the uh, fact that this was a Christmas plot. Uh, I'm very curious uh, to read uh, more about uh, these characters uh, that I fell in love with in a longer and a more serious toned uh, mystery. So overall I gave All Through the Night by Mary Higgins Clark a 7 out of 10. Today is the 26th of uh, April and I finished uh, the second book uh, in Başkomiser Nevzat series by Ahmet Ümit. This was a reread for me and uh, when I originally read it, uh, I think about uh, 12 or 13 years ago, uh, I actually rated uh, this uh, short story collection two stars, uh, which is equivalent to, of course, four out of ten. And in order uh, to finish uh, the series, uh, I thought uh, I had to endure this uh, short story collection again since I need to uh, refresh my memory on the uh, characters. In this uh, short story collection, uh, there are uh, 19 cases involving Başkomiser Nevzat and mostly his associate Ali. And the cases involve uh, people from all classes of uh, the people uh, living uh, in the city of Istanbul. I was actually pleasantly surprised by this read. It could be because I'm much more uh, open uh, to mystery short stories than the first time that I read this book, uh, which was uh, the time that I was uh, madly in love with uh, Agatha Christie's novels. And I had a prejudice that uh, I would not like mystery short stories as much as I do. But this time I really enjoyed uh, uh, the short stories because uh, they included many very interesting people and the characters of uh, both uh, Başkomiser Nevzat and Ali were quite distinctive and the writing quality of Ahmet Ümit improved uh, so much more uh, in this second work uh, in the series. The quality of short stories were all uh, above average but nothing spectacular. I rated uh, this short story collection uh, with the same rating as the uh, first uh, work in the series. I also gave Şeytan Ayrıntı da Gizlidir by Ahmet Ümit a 7 out of 10 uh, in this reread. Uh, today is the 28th of uh, April. I finished uh, the last book uh, in my uh, first uh, trilogy that I chosen uh, for trilogies read along, which was The Winner's Kiss uh, by Mary Rutrowski. In this last book, uh, in the Winners uh, Trilogy, uh, we follow uh, the further adventures of uh, Erin and uh, Kestrel, right where we left them uh, at the end of the second book. Uh, because uh, it would be spoilers, I would not tell uh, much about uh, the plot, but I can say that uh, the conflict and the tension between the Valerian uh, state and uh, the Herani state uh, do rise uh, a lot and we finished the story with a very climatic event. I liked uh, this last book in the trilogy the most. Unlike the other two, the book had a very even uh, tempo which was gradually increasing uh, to the big climax. 
Uh, the characters of uh, Erin and uh, especially Kestrel uh, was uh, much more uh, complex. I really did like uh, the conflicts uh, that they uh, felt uh, in themselves about uh, who they were and who they love. And I additionally really enjoyed uh, the side characters in this book. Uh, they were all uh, defined very very well and uh, also quite likable. Uh, so overall uh, I gave The Winner's Kiss by Marie Trotsky an 8 out of 10 and uh, I am very glad uh, that I finished uh, the first trilogy that I chosen. Uh, it was quite an enjoyable uh, trilogy all along. By finishing this trilogy, I also uh, progressed uh, in my uh, series about series reading challenge. Today is the 29th of April and I finished the third work in the graphic novel series Heartstopper by Alice Osman. In this graphic novel, the relationship between our young couple continue where they left off and uh, students of the high school uh, do go to Paris. And during this trip, we problem the encounters of coming out, uh, gender prejudice, uh, eating disorders, uh, low self-esteem, and many other problems uh, faced by teenagers today. Uh, first of all, uh, I liked uh, that uh, the story uh, focused uh, not just on romance in this graphic novel. The side characters were also uh, quite important uh, in the story. And I also really liked the perspective uh, that uh, this graphic novel gave about the problems of uh, what happens after coming out. Like the first volume, I gave Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Osman also an 8 out of 10. So those were my thoughts about uh, 12 works uh, that I finished and uh, one work uh, that I DNF'd uh, in the month of April. Uh, please comment down below, uh, have you read any of the works uh, that I have mentioned in this video? And uh, what did you think of them? If you're a new viewer, first of all, welcome. Uh, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you very soon. Bye. As for Turkish word of the day, I'm going to choose uh, people uh, since I joined uh, People April uh, event. People means insanlar in Turkish and insanlar is our Turkish word of the day. Have a good day.